Good evening. I'm Dr. Steve Finger, and we'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Hot Fire, Brooklyn's own libertarian TV show. Uh, today, we're lucky and fortunate to have with us uh, Mr. John Clifton, who is the libertarian candidate for governor this year. Uh, John is a social worker, he's a Navy veteran, and he has some very strong views about how he would make New York State a better place to live uh, if he becomes governor. John, welcome to Hard Fire. And peace and freedom, and grace be with you, and me, and to everybody else. Thank you. Um, that was a wonderful introduction. I should have hired you and had you go around the campaign stump with me. Uh, uh, I give you a good price. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running um, this year um, to bring back freedom to New York. Uh, that's the, the campaign motto. That's the campaign theory. And the logic behind it is uh, pretty self-evident. Uh, we've lost a lot of our freedoms and liberties. Uh, we are in a position now where um, you know, a significant amount of the paycheck goes away in taxes simply on the uh, state level um, of, for one um, boondoggle or another. We've got a situation where uh, you can't... A boondoggle is defined as an essential expenditure by these people that uh, give us these boondoggles? Um, by, by the boondogglers. By the boondogglers. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They think every the expenditure is essential, essentially, and nothing ever gets cut. Uh, nothing ever gets slowed down, even, uh, in, in modern New York politics. Uh, they're just different uh, chairs that get moved around you know, and reshuffled uh, in, in terms of a reform uh, that's superficial. Uh, but the government spending has expanded. Uh, which I would call government force, you know, because the uh, money to provide these services uh, comes from taking it uh, forcibly from taxpayers and from other citizens. And it seems to me that uh, we should have as little force and fraud in our lives as possible. Uh, we should be electing individuals who will bring back freedom in the form of respecting people's property rights and make, making sure they maintain and keep their property uh, and, and permit them to uh, have the ki make the kind of personal choices and decisions to the maximum extent uh, that, that, that will remind them that they are in a, supposedly a free country. Uh, if a person wants to uh, take a, a, a shot of ephedra, you know, to um, help burn fat and uh, and maybe handle uh, a stuffy nose or something. Mm -hmm. um, why is there a state ban on that? In addition to a federal ban right. on that. Um, same for smoking. You know, why can't you go into a restaurant and smoke? Mm -hmm. You know, what what what's the deal there? You know, uh, if, what if it's an all smoking restaurant um, or all smoking club? This, the the new law says you can't smoke even under those circumstances. If everybody is assenting to mm -hmm. smoking together and inhaling each other's smoke. Uh, so on for. Minor issues or so supposedly um, petty issues like that all the way to the big issues. Like why are we just going along with supporting, uh, dispensing uh, National Guard troops mm. to fight? Uh, okay, well you've raised quite a few issues there, John. I know our viewers would like, to, would like to go into these in detail. And uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand you have a plan for reducing taxes, for capping taxes. Do you want to tell us which taxes you would like to, uh, which taxes you would like to reduce or eliminate? Well, the two biggest headaches mm -hmm. uh, to most New Yorkers are the property taxes in mm -hmm. New York State, which uh, are ratcheted up for just about every um, sort of um, state spending uh, imaginable. And a lot of the time, uh, if the state doesn't do it directly, they mandate it indirectly. That is, they mandate that a county, like in out in Long Island. Uh, supply X amount of dollars for this purpose or that purpose, period. And then it leaves it to those counties to come up with the way to do it. And the only feasible way some counties end up you know, resorting to is raising property taxes. Uh, this is making housing uh, more and more unaffordable to more and more people, residents out there. And in and, and other parts of the state as well are feeling the sting of this. Uh, I would put an immediate cap on it. Um, the, Specific well, is mechanism. That, would that be a state <coughs> state uh, cap? I think most property taxes are local. Would you reduce mandates of the states, the cities, and this, the counties would the have less incentive to uh, details? But it, it would be reducing 
the, mm -hmm. uh, the mandates or reversing uh, or not enforcing the mandates uh, through various mechanisms. That it, get, it would go over the heads of a lot of viewers to, to go into that, so we, we're just going to go past that. But the basic idea is to cut them off as where they are right now as a first step toward, from a libertarian point of view, moving towards eliminating the concept of property taxes. Uh, you, if you own your home, you own your home. Hmm. If you are the owner, it shouldn't be subject to anything else. Like if you don't pay a property tax for a given, given year, uh, somehow the state has a right to take your property from you. Or, well, I thought you owned your own your home So are you, outright, are you, you know, if you've paid off the mortgage. Are you advocating a, a, a constitutional amendment that would prohibit property taxes throughout the state? That would be one mechanism. Uh, and other mechanisms I'm welcome to hear and, and to develop towards this concept of first capping and then Eliminate. dropping. Yes. I understand you feel the same way about the income tax. I definitely feel that way about the, um, the, the state income tax is one of the other engines that is driving a lot of the middle class out of New York. Uh, and parts of the state are becoming like a ghost town where you have maybe working class and you have in, uh, immigrants coming in and maybe you have some wealthy people staying on, and a lot of government employees. Um, but beside that, uh, the, the private sector is evaporating uh, from mm -hmm. the state rather than continuing into perpetuity supporting uh, the, um, all the subsidy programs that, that exist in the state. Uh, the state income tax uh, can be capped, I don't want to say capped, I said that for property taxes. We can eliminate it for anybody earning under 75000 Mm -hmm. um, that, that was, again, pr promoted by uh, William Weld, who initially got our party's nomination but stepped, stepped down from that. Um, and I think it's a very good idea, and I'm um, um, forwarding it. As so you're not as advocating as eliminating all income taxes, just income taxes of people below again, a certain... as a first step. But eventually would, you'd like to eliminate all the income yeah, tax. We, we should eliminate <clears> it. We should eliminate all the mysterious uh, myriad... Uh, uh, legal legalese and tricks that uh, make people uh, liable for paying taxes when they actually may not even have a tax liability. That's a whole other subject that I've done several shows on Hard Fire about. Mm. Um, we should be eliminating the tax and the apparatus that uh, ensnares people in liability. And so I would be I would be very well. Uh, let me ask you, John. You, on you that front. property taxes and income taxes are a pretty big chunk of the. Uh, government income. What would you substitute? Wh what kind of taxes would you would you feel are legitimate for the state to uh, to use to to pay its expenses? I would replace it with more freedom and in the form of less uh, support of a coercive uh, block of pro uh, programs that are not necessary under certainly as as originally realized under the federal constitution and um, certainly under the state constitution. One example, common, common example, a lot of the spending is going to education. Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposedly mandated in the state constitution that, um, that the, the, the government provide for you know, a sound education. Um, but that does not imply something from that, that language that the government has to supply a whole public school apparatus and fund it to whatever um, uh, infinite extent in order to, to fulfill that promise. Uh, it can. The government can promote, by not interfering with the private economy, uh, the success of private education, private school, schools, and, and sources of learning, and back away from all the compulsory um, elements of the current government school system. Uh, from the compulsory, you, you realize that with, with the school system, uh, you, you are compelled to send children there. Mm -hmm. You are compelled to pay taxes. You're compelled to follow the policies of, that are adopted for the school system. It's like double and triple uh, force. So you're advocating and, eliminating compulsory education. Yes, and, and, and so re replacing that with letting people decide to, uh, uh, um, among a greater array of choices for educating their youth and themselves, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's private schooling, whether it's homeschooling, whether it's uh, teacher supported um, colleges where the teachers set up a, uh, a, a system that they get privately funded that they operate and fund and, and, and coordinate to educate uh, people to um, applications, new applications of distance learning where uh, 
some children can be taught by computer in, as part of a home schooling environment. Uh, certainly, if, we're, if they're getting taught to learn how to use computers in the government schools, they can be taught uh, through computers at home. Uh, they can be well, taught homeschooling, in a private. We have homeschooling and private school. What would your, I'm how would your about program? I'm talking as the norm, not as the uh, preoccupation of just a handful. I'm talking about the way it was prior to, throughout human history, prior to, say, the, the mid-19th century. So you're not actually talking about overnight eliminating public schools. You're talking about moving in the direction moving in that of direction. private schools, of making it easier for people to pay for private schools because you're reducing their taxes so they have more money to spend on private schools. Yeah, and, and, and one of the other uh, methods is to um, give people a tax credit that can be applied toward, say, the first $3,000 of income towards any income, uh, any source of uh, education. This will be before you eliminate the income tax. Um, true, uh, but I mean, some part of that is related to the federal tax, so uh, oh. this would be a different um, animal. Uh, this would um, allow people to make choices about private schooling and um, versus charter schools or whatever they wanted to send their children to, uh, and it would avoid the issue that's involved, the complication involved in vouchers of, of when you have tax money set aside to support private schools, then it becomes a political football about, well, what are we going to expect from these private schools uh, in return for the money? That so you feel that the, that the disadvantage of vouchers would be that the, the same government regulatory apparatus in the public schools would be carried over into the private schools. Yeah, and and we've already feel seen that, way. that um, in New York and elsewhere around the country. So I, uh, that's why one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to talk about vouchers as mm -hmm. a specific solution because uh, that's a, in some ways a perpetuation of a system where government coordinates education. So you'd like to see private schools paid for by the people that are using the private schools? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's basically it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and, and the, the end result should be a wider array of choices mm -hmm. so that uh, we're not stuck just with government schools. We, we in fact, should separate uh, school from state mm -hmm. at this point. Well, we, how, we, how would you answer the criticism of people that would say that many poor people don't have enough money to send their kids to a private school, what would, what would happen with them un, under this system? There is a, a <coughs> network that can replace the government schools, which is, are not serving those poor families anyway. Uh, that would be a vast improvement over the current system. Uh, there are, again, in, traditionally there have been church-based networks that handle education of, of, of the children for families. There have been um, ways in which families in terms of the parent level could be trained by the schools if they were going to talk, teach their children directly. Uh, there are other charitable organizations that with uh, a, a lessened tax burden on the uh, electorate would have a vast amount of more uh, charity money returned to the private economy such that they could use to fund. So you're education. saying basically the, the, the crux of this is to lower taxes enough that people have more discretionary income and if they did, then they would be able to afford the education that they can't really afford now. Yeah, bring back freedom by keeping the money back in people's pockets mm -hmm. so they can more wisely spend it uh, on their children's education. Right. You think it could be done better privately? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so basically your plan for education would be getting the government out of the business and, and making it more affordable by cutting back on taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, we discussed a few other things before, John, and you were talking about uh, the, the availability of guns in society mm -hmm. and how the government sometimes infringes upon the rights of a citizen mm -hmm. to keep and bear arms. Do you, would you like to elaborate yeah. on well, that? Last year, there was a disaster down in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and, uh, the Katrina hurricane and right. afterwards, and which we saw systematic uh, destruction of respect for people's property uh, and civil liberties. Uh, we saw people being frisked, you know, as, as they were sent to the Superdome. Uh, no probable cause, you know, basis for doing this. They, they just, they're, they're poor. People so were frisked, frisked by the frisked, police? Frisked for um, possible illegal guns, oh, okay. possible illegal substances or contraband. Uh, and some people pointed out the issue that, that, that they, they, they did that minute screening of all those people, but uh, the season ticket holders who went through those gates never got that kind of treatment. Uh, maybe they're a different demographic, and so they don't get to be uh, accosted that way. Uh, but that's the way Katrina started, or the, the whole uh, episode. But a funny thing happened during the flooding, and, and during the emergency created by this situation, um, federal and some state authorities went over to people's houses and started taking their guns, or trying to take people's guns away. Uh, there was no good, sensible reason for this in, the, in terms of the fact that 
the, these people were, in most cases, were living in the good parts of town that were not affected by flooding. Um, and so they, there was no reason to be going to them in the first place. And there was looting going on in many parts of the city. Um, and in the midst of that, you know, a person should be able to protect themselves mm -hmm. by uh, a normal means, like um, having a, a weapon on them. Uh, so um, many states and the federal government um, is, is, in terms of the Congress at the moment, is trying to pass a law that would prohibit um, government from uh, confiscating people's guns in emergencies. Okay, I'm going to ask you to hold that thought for just one second while we pause for a brief public service announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers of Hardfire, if you want freedom and you want it in your lifetime, you want it back in New York, you've got to educate yourself, you've got to keep yourself abreast of all the activities that are happening uh, within the liberty movement. Uh, one convenient way to do that is to support the Libertarian Party of New York. Uh, go to its website at ny.lp.org where you'll find a comprehensive list of uh, you know, press releases, um, activities, uh, candidates, the activities, and other um, vital information. You've got to do it. You've got to pick up the load, pick up the yoke, and help bring back freedom to New York. Do so, and you will find yourself back in the land of peace and freedom. Well, that was a very interesting public service announcement. And now we're going to resume our program with John Clifton, the Libertarian candidate for governor of New York. Okay, John, we were just talking about, about guns and the way the police power was abused during the Katrina episode yes. to disarm citizens who really should be able to keep their guns, in your view. So I think in this state, uh, that kind of law should be passed so that the state government uh, won't be able to simply take advantage of uh, a disaster that might happen to us, terrorist or a hurricane that somehow reaches this state uh, or something else, and just use it as an excuse for gun grabbing. I think that's a, a ridiculous, um, excessive use of power uh, and, and taking advantage of people at a time of weakness. And uh, we should have protections in place to ensure that homeowners are protected in their ability to defend themselves and their property. I, I think that's Im immensely important uh, to head off any future encroachments upon their freedoms and, and, and not just bring back freedom, but to make sure freedom doesn't go away in, in that particular. So you feel basically, I assume, that, uh, that the Second Amendment will protect uh, individuals from having their guns taken away from them? They should it's have the right to have their guns? always been something like the last line of defense, or maybe even the first line of defense. You know, when Paul Revere was mm -hmm. made his famous ride, he, it was in order to tell the population in Boston that the British were coming to take their guns. Mm -hmm. And if they had taken them, there would have been no revolution, because there would have been no way to fight back. So uh, people should understand what what's the stakes are here. Uh, there are, there's even a line of thinking that uh, holds that a lot of these um, emergencies are either um, exacerbated by government or even perhaps uh, government compl is complicit in the creation of these disasters so as to create a, an emergency situation where right can be taken away. Uh, I hope that uh, we can put in place uh, and restore measures that will uh, make sure the constitutional and uh, basic individual rights of, of people in, in New York are protected. Uh, what do you say to people who say that if everybody had guns, it would be like a Wild West out there? Well, if <clears throat> everybody had um, guns in the Wild West, then there was no Wild West. Uh, that, that's uh, it's a, something that people have to do some reading up on, but um, there was a lot of law and order in the frontier west while uh, when it was understood everybody could uh, exercise the use of their self-defense um, rights in, in, in the case of being attacked. Uh, and it's, it only started seeing explosions in violence w in certain streets and, and cities where uh, gun control uh, measures or the gun control freaks got their way and, and, and took away the rights of regular people to have guns so that you know criminals um, were able to then go run wild on the population. Do you think basically it's just the opposite of the way people believe? You think if every law-abiding citizen had the right to protect himself, then it would be a lot safer society? Yes, and I think in, in New York, one of the other protections that, that we should give afford to people who are outside New York is those people coming into New York from other states where they have um, acquired licenses to carry concealed weapons, um, those rights should be protected in this state. You know, we should respect or 
holds so the pattern. So if somebody from another state has a license for a concealed weapon, they should be able to carry a concealed there weapon in New York? There should be a, a degree of reciprocity mm -hmm. uh, in respecting other people's, uh, the, the laws passed to pr and the li and licenses acquired by people uh, to, uh, to keep and, and bear arms mm -hmm. that, that they got from other states. That should be respected here when they come traveling here or come into New York to work right. and so on. Obviously, if another state gave them that, then uh, they've already passed some kind of test to ensure trust. You know, that they would, Should they there would be some sort of regulation of, of concealed weapons? Should it be given to well, convicted felons? Should it be given to children? Should we do anything to regulate the sale of guns at all? Um, well, there should be restrictions on the restrictions because sometimes the restrictions have been put in place to be expanded as uh, we've seen in New York to cover basically most of the adult population. Mm -hmm. I would work in the other res direction and uh, put restrictions only for emergency or very clearly and tightly defined exceptions. Uh, the gov governor of a state has the power to actually authorize that all individuals uh, can be armed and, and, and be, have a right to, cons to carry weapons um, based on considering them the unofficial militia of the state. Uh, so you can that essentially deputize every person in the state? Well, basically there already are a militia and the, the government can simply recognize the fact of the matter. Mm -hmm. um, because the powers of, the, of politicians and elected officials are simply delegated powers. The original powers come from the people themselves mm -hmm. and, and, and the governor can, can recognize Okay. Those are All right. Speaking about, about guns and ammunition, I know you have some very strong feelings about uh, veterans returning from, uh, from Iraq and being hurt by the use of depleted uranium in, in weapons over there. I don't think most of our viewers realize that depleted uranium is being used there and that it may have some health consequences. Can you tell us in what way is this being used mm -hmm. in Iraq? Is it? And, and what, uh, what should be done about it? Yeah. The Radioactive materials, uranium-based materials that have been used in a lot of our munitions and ammunition uh, and, and explosive materials uh, have been used in Iraq for several years. And it's creating health hazards for the returning troops and for, uh, especially for the civilian Iraqi population. Uh, in the hospitals over there, they're, they're encountering people who are coming up with three different types of cancer in their body. Lung cancer, uh, throat cancer. First whatever. of all, where is this depleted uranium thing. being used? I don't think most it's being really used on it. in the battlefront. It's what, being used in what it's capacity uh, in, in, in the bullets, in, in, in the, the bullets, in the ammunition, in the plating of some of the tanks and and They're actually armored using vehicles. radioactive materials. Yes, there. and this creates a problem uh, in terms of the after effects, especially with the stuff. Tons of it now lying, uh, you know, on on the streets and the plains of Iraq. The radiation just keeps spreading out. Mm -hmm. Uh, even beyond the region of the Middle East, uh, according to some reports. And the testing of returning veterans in this country by the federal government is inadequate. Uh, they, the federal government, in my view, is deliberately not doing the appropriate uh, rigorous testing to determine who has suffered from radiation poisoning and who hasn't. The, those instruments exist. The state government can, and the governor can fill in the gaps that have been left um, um, unattended to by the federal government by um, attending to our veterans' needs and getting them the proper health screenings and testings uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, Do you feel, as governor, you could be instrumental in testing these returning veterans yes. to, to give them the decent health care that they get uh, mm -hmm. from, the, from the exposure to all this, this yes. material? Well, going, continuing along with the, uh, the situation in, in Iraq, I know that you're, you're very opposed mm -hmm. to our government's involvement in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you were of the, the, the feeling, the impression, that the Fed, that the governor could have some say in how the National Guard troops are used over there. I think most people just assume that the president can take mm -hmm. National Guard troops and order them to go any place he wants them to go. I think you mm -hmm. have a different opinion, and you would do, use them differently. Yes, the, the the powers of the governor has in this area are relating to the distribution of National Guard troops uh, in, for various purposes, and simply because Washington talks uh, and says send them here, do this with them, um, and we're going to keep them here for X amount of time, regardless of what their contracts say. Mm -hmm. um, the governor can say, wait a minute, no. You know, um, the governor Schwarzenegger said, no, I, I'm not sending the troops, uh, the National Guard troops down to the border, simply because um, Bush calls me up and says so. Um, Hawaii, a few months ago, um, the legislature uh, passed a revolution, resolution overwhelmingly calling for the governor of that state to withdraw the National Guard troops that were stationed in Iraq. 
uh, the National Governors Association have specifically complained about this last, uh, this past August, uh, about uh, the federalization and, and, and the unwarranted ex overreach of Washington, D.C. in trying to make the National uh, Guards of the different states into a um, second uh, national army. Uh, the governor can stand up and say, I will not have my state be complicit in war crimes hmm. being uh, carried out by a government the federal, at the federal level, which launched this aggression against a country that had not attacked it uh, on the basis of a war that was undeclared and is in violation of inter international codes. We can make a difference um, by in bringing back freedom by electing a governor such as myself who will stand up to Washington. Um, one of the reasons I, I, I specifically think Spitzer will be a disaster if he got elected in this mm -hmm. office is because he never stood up to Washington on the issue of 9-11. He never did his own independent investigation where, and he had the standing power to do so uh, for five years mm -hmm. and he did nothing. He investigated everything else that padded his resume as um, some so kind of tough prosecutor. So you would be a more rebellious kind of a governor and stand up for New York? Yes, and um, as opposed to someone who's already shown that they're craven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that comes as a big surprise to most people who just assume that the president can nationalize the National Guard at that will. No, it, it's been established that under emergencies he can do certain things, but he has no standing authority to, to just use the truth any way he wants, any time he wants to. Mm -hmm. um, okay. okay, well, this has been a very provocative and a very interesting half hour uh, with John Clifton, the gubernatorial, libertarian gubernatorial candidate in New York and hopefully the next uh, governor in the state of New York. John, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to come here and speak to us and give us a lot of new ideas that we think our, uh, our viewers would like to know more about. Website, electclifton.org. Elect electclifton.org, okay. electclifton.org. Uh, on behalf of Hardfire, the Libertarian TV show, Libertarian uh, TV, TV show uh, thank you very much for attending and I hope you'll view us again next week for another exciting episode of Hardfire.